Good morning and thank you for the invitation to speak to you today. I'm very sorry that I can't be there in person, but it is good to know, however, that so many tenants and housing providers will be coming together to listen to the speakers, attend the workshops and get involved in the debates over the next two days. Everyone deserves to live in a safe, secure and affordable home and social housing has a major role to play in making sure that happens. The importance of housing is so core to the well-being of our nation that the Welsh Government has made it a key priority in our national strategy, Prosperity for All. As a Government, we talk about the importance of good quality housing and its role in helping ensure that people are happy and healthy. We talk about how housing can have an impact on children's outcomes at school. We also talk about our policies and our financial investments and our cross-government collaboration. But for me, the most important conversation, or rather ongoing dialogue, that we need to have is with you. The tenants who live in the homes that we strive to see built and the people who feel the impact of our policies and with the people who deliver the services directly to tenants. In housing, we have long referred to the importance of tenant voice and tenant participation. We claim that tenants are at the heart of everything we do. These claims are very genuine, but we know that it's extremely difficult to be sure that we have the right balance. Most tenants want to be able to go home of an evening, close the door and get on with their lives. They want to know that their landlord will respond when needed, listen and take positive action when there's a problem and treat them fairly. Others will want a more proactive relationship with their landlords and the services that they offer. There's no single approach that will suit everyone. So we are very much focused on rethinking what we mean by tenant participation and engagement and how we can facilitate hearing from you when you want to be heard and responding positively and constructively to the messages you give us. All this in an ever-changing demographic, economic and environmental landscape. Housing is not a standalone policy. As I said, we know the impact of housing reaches right across the public services. Health and social care is a perfect example. The cost of poor housing to the NHS in Wales is now believed to be close to £150 million a year. And care and repair Cymru studies have shown us that every pound invested in housing adaptations alone delivers a saving of £7.50 for the health and social care services. It isn't just about financial costs, of course, and leaving them aside, we know that people really value the services that work together and reflect their individual needs rather than artificial organisational structures. A Healthier Wales, our plan for health and social care is the Welsh Government's response to the parliamentary review of health and social care. Implementation of the plan provides us with an important opportunity to make much more progress in integrating housing with wider portfolios. Ensuring people have a safe, warm and well-built home should be a given. But unfortunately, this is not the case for everyone. Too many people in Wales live in insecure, poor quality and inadequate conditions and we've seen an increase in the number of people rough sleeping. Addressing this is a priority for me. Housing supply is a significant factor here, as is affordability, but addressing the complex problems that lead to homelessness requires us to work across traditional portfolio boundaries. Only then will we tackle the root causes of both youth and adult homelessness. We are making record investments in housing and tackling homelessness. We have protected funding to support people to live independently and set the benchmark in terms of our focus on prevention. We have ambitious plans, but it is important that we occasionally we stand back to consider whether we're taking the best approach possible and are using our resources to the greatest effect. This is why I was pleased to set in motion the independently chaired Affordable Housing Review. This is an exciting piece of work which will underpin the direction of travel for the housing sector in Wales for many years ahead. I expect it to bring forward wide-ranging, innovative recommendations that will challenge the way we think and plan as a government and as a sector. Housing providers play a role in this. Their ability to strengthen and become more robust is critically important to our wider ambitions. 
It is also vital that they're able to develop new affordable secure housing to meet the growing and changing demands. But there is no point investing in new affordable housing if we don't protect what we already have. The implementation of the Abolition of the Right to Buy and Associated Rights Wales Act next January will help to address housing pressure. It will protect the supply of social housing for those people who need it most and put an end to the significant loss of our social housing stock whilst giving local authorities the confidence to invest in new social housing. One event that has shaped and will continue to shape our approach to housing and particular social housing is of course the tragedy last June at Grenfell Tower. Responding to the issues raised by Grenfell will require us to rethink how we plan, build, maintain and use our buildings and this will take time. But it also highlights a point you will recognise. People living in buildings must have their voices heard. You are the experts on your own homes and have an important contribution to make. Dame Judith Hackett's independent review of building regulations and fire safety, whilst commissioned by the UK government, highlights the importance of politicians and landlords wherever they are, actively listening to what tenants have to say. Effective resident engagement can benefit everyone, landlords and residents as well as the wider community. The recommendations of the Hackett review provide Welsh Government with an opportunity to involve you as we make sure that the authentic voice of people affected by decisions can be heard and given appropriate weight. We know that there are great examples of tenant engagement. Fran Bevan highlighted her experience in the October issue of Welsh Housing Quarterly. The article outlines Fran's 12-year journey from new tenant in a home owned by the local council and finishing as the first tenant chair of the Merthyr Valley's Homes Democratic Body. The Democratic Body not only appoints the Landlords Board, but they also hold them to account. The Merthyr Valley's Homes model is a great example of an organisation that has embraced tenant engagement and handed much more control to tenants. The Welsh Government is committed to tenant participation and has provided funding to TPAS Cymru over the past two years. I am pleased to announce that the funding for TPAS Cymru is being extended to March 2020. This will give time for the Tenants of the Heart Review to conclude and for us to concentrate on what really matters to you. The Tenants of the Heart Strategic Review is being undertaken by the Regulatory Board for Wales. It is seeking to understand the current landscape for tenant participation, what positive tenant participation looks like and what works in different contexts in order to develop a tool to support tenant engagement. This review will help inform the sector about what tenant participation might look like in the future. The review will seek to establish an agreed set of principles to underpin effective tenant engagement. You will get more information on this in tomorrow's workshop. I know that affordability, paying rent in advance and antisocial behaviour are issues which cause some of you problems from time to time. This is your opportunity to provide suggestions on how these issues can be resolved, although I appreciate that finding deliverable solutions will not be an easy task. I've said a lot about social housing, but I am very clear that the private rented sector is an important partner in meeting the housing needs of Welsh citizens. Our Housing Wales Act 2014 included groundbreaking legislation designed to improve the private rented sector through the mandatory registration and licensing of all private landlords and agents. Registration identifies private landlords who let properties and tells us where those properties are. Licensing includes a fit and proper person test and, importantly, training for those who directly let and manage properties. Ensuring landlords and agents are fully aware of their responsibilities raises standards and makes the sector a more attractive proposition. The scheme also reduces the scope for poor landlords to neglect their responsibilities and for rogue landlords to abuse their position without fear of consequences. Building on this, we have recently introduced legislation which, subject to being passed into law by the Assembly, will ban landlords and agents from charging fees to tenants for entering or moving around within the PRS. Knowing that the costs of moving into the private rented sector will be limited to the rent and deposit will reduce barriers and help make the PRS a viable option, increasing the choice for those who want to rent. 
So regardless of if you're a social or private tenant, this conference is your opportunity to contribute your thoughts and ideas. Sharing your own perceptions and experiences of renting in a social or private setting will also help develop tenant participation in the future. I hope you enjoy meeting other tenants over the next two days and having the opportunity to share best practice. Hopefully the conference will harness your enthusiasm to get further involved with your tenant groups when you leave. And I'm very sorry again for not being able to be with you. Thank you very much. Dielkenvaur. <laughs>